This video is the first in a series of videos where we begin to look at authentication with MongoDB. We're going to enhance our single page application to allow users to sign up to it and also to log in. And therefore, what we can start to do is to restrict certain accesses within our website, depending on if a user is logged in. And then in this specific video, we're just going to look at the sign up part for authentication. I've left a link in the description down below for the source code of this video. In there, you'll find two folders. So we have before and after. So before will contain the code at the start of the video and after will contain it at the end of the video. So feel free to join along. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Please leave any comments to let me know how you got along with this video down below and any feedback that you might have. So we'll be starting with a single page application built with Angular, Express, Node and MongoDB. If you want to see how we create this application from scratch and step by step, I will link this video in a card at the top right. So we're going to begin adding authentication to our web application with the visual components first. This will include a brand new login page for users that have already signed up to the diary and also a sign up page which is used to register new users. In the Angular app, I will create these two components from the command line. So I will type NGGC, and that stands for generate component, followed by login to create the login component. And then I'm going to do the exact same with sign dash up for the sign up component. Once they've both been created, I will register the login component to the login route and the sign up component to the sign up route in our app routing module. So we will design these two components to contain forms as you might expect to see on any normal website, such as including an email and password to sign up and to log in with. Uh, this is going to be pretty basic, but of course, feel free to enhance the design to include fields you might like, such as the name, a mobile number, and any other details for signing up. And then in the login form, I'm going to copy and paste the diary form HTML. Now, if you want to see how we created this form before, I'll leave a link to that video in the top right right now. Now we want to keep this really simple, so reusing this form that we've already built is probably the easiest way. So I'm going to update the fields and labels to username and password, and also the form group name to login form for our login form. I'll also change the submit button to read uh, login so it's a little bit more uh, clear what it's going to be doing. Now we have a few compile errors, so let's start looking at how we can resolve them. So in the TypeScript file, I will create the onSubmit function and the login form variable as type form group. And then I'm going to initialize this within the ng on init function as equal to a new form group where there will be two keys of username and password and each of these are going to have their own form control elements just as i've done in the diary form component i will initialize them to an empty string and make them required with the validators.required plugin I'm going to quickly jump back in the HTML file and update the password input to type password. And the difference this will make is that when you type your password within the text box, it won't be visible in plain text. It will just appear uh, sort of as uh, little dots as you see on any normal website. I'll do this exact same process, but for the sign up component, which is where we're going to be copying the HTML and we're going to be changing the form group labels and the submit button to sign up as opposed to log in. Uh, 
and then within the TypeScript file for the signup component, we're also then going to be initializing the form group within the ng on init function. So we're going to access these two forms through the header component. I will add a new unordered list that will store buttons to both of these pages. So I will add the class of nav, navbar-nav, and then style it so it is floating right. Then I will add two links that navigate to the forward slash login and forward slash sign up pages, just as we have registered within the app routing module. And then I'm also going to pass in the text of login and sign up respectively. I will later change these so only one is visible depending on if a user is actually logged in, uh, but we will look at this in a different video. So let's quickly restart our application with ng-serve, and if I head to localhost 4200, I can now see these new buttons appear in the top right, and if I select them, we can see our forms are now appearing. So we have the login button and the sign up button uh, just as we expect and it looks pretty good so far. Now that we have our login and sign up forms created we can begin to think about how we will store our user data with MongoDB. To begin we will configure two endpoints in our express server for both submitting new users to the database and authenticating users when they log in. So these requests to the database will require a new model that we define with Mongoose uh, so for this, I will create a new user-model.js file. And then within that file, I will require mongoose and define a new schema called user schema. And I will create this with the mongoose.schema method. I will pass in the username and password as type string. And lastly, I will export this with mongoose model just as we have done before with a key of user model. And this will then be imported into our express middleware. So before we begin using the schema, I'm just going to enhance it in a couple ways. So first I will make the username and password as required fields. So in the schema, I will wrap the type in curly braces and specify the key of type for both followed by a colon and then string. Then I will append a new key of required with the value of true. Now our schema will throw an error if either field is empty. We also want to ensure that our username is unique. So for this, I will use the mongoose unique validator plugin. So I'm just going to install this with npm install dash dash save mongoose dash unique dash validator. I will import the validator into the file using the required keyword as we have done before. And then within the user schema, I will make unique as true within the username parameters. We then call the plugin after the schema is defined with user schema dot plugin and then unique validators within brackets. This will ensure our username is unique as we enter it to the database. Now that we have our user model defined and validated, we can make it available within the express middleware by storing it in a constant and calling require pointing to the user model.js file. At the bottom of the file, I'm going to register a new post endpoint for the URI or forward slash sign up. And within the signup method body, I will define a new instance of the user model because we will need to then send that to the database. I'll do this with a new constant of user model equals new 
user model. Then within curly braces, I'll define the key of username, colon, then the request body username. And the same for the password. But if we continue to process the password just like this, we'll be breaching huge data privacy concerns for our users as we will be persisting their password data in plain text. So instead, what we want to do is hash the password so it cannot be read from the database. We will understand how we use the hash to verify the password in a future video, but to begin hashing, we will install a new package called bcrypt with npm install dash dash save bcrypt. I will then import it to a constant as bcrypt. And then in the signup method, before we define our user model, I will use bcrypt package and call the hash method. The hash method will accept the password as an argument and apply a hash function to it. Uh, so for this, I will pass in the request body password as the first argument and then number 10 as the second argument. The number 10 instructs bcrypt to the degree of complexity to apply the hash function. And then after the hash method, we can chain a promise to the hash value by calling dot then, passing in the new hashed password. Let's just call this hash for now. And then creating a new user object with the password as equal to hash rather than the request body password. So now we're no longer handling that plain text body password. Now I can save the user to the database by calling user.save and again I will chain a promise with dot then passing the result back to the user with status 201 and a JSON response with a message of user created. I'll finally add a catch box with an error code of 500 to detect any errors in signup issues. With our backend setup, let's connect our Angular app with the new endpoint. So first I'll create a new shared service for authentication that I will use to manage requests to and from our forms. I'll call it auth service and I'll place it in the shared folder. I'll mark the service with the injectable annotation and provide it in the root so all of our components have access to it. For our sign up form, I will add a method called sign up user in the authentication service TypeScript file. The signup user method will accept the username and password that it receives from the signup form, and then it will pass these to the Express middleware endpoint. So, in order for our signup user method to make the call, I will make the HTTP client available to the method by injecting it within the constructor as we have done before. So using the HTTP client, I'll submit a post request to the localhost 3000 forward slash and then sign up. I'll enrich the request with an item that holds the user authentication details. So these details will be stored in a new interface. I'll create a new shared file once again called auth-model.ts and within the file I will export an interface called auth-model and this auth-model just for this example will store two strings and that will be for the username and the password. So if we head back into our auth service, I will create a new instance of our auth model, which will hold our username and password, and which we will then pass into our signup endpoint with Express. 
So I'll write const auth model and then a colon followed by auth model. And that will be equal to the username, which is equal to the username and the password, which is equal to the password. I'll pass the auth data as the second argument in the post request. And we are passing the password as plain text within the application, but it will be the express middleware that will perform the hashing on that password before it persists it. So after we send the request, I'll subscribe to the response and log it to the console for us to see. So the pieces to our sign up form are nearly complete. We have our form, we have the TypeScript method that accepts the form response. We have an auth service that will send the request to the express middleware and the express middleware that will send the request with the hashed password to our MongoDB database. So all that's missing is a connection between the form's TypeScript method and the auth service. So for this, I'll inject the auth service into the signup component through the constructor. Then I will call the signup user method within the onSubmit method. This will pass in the signup form.value.username and the signup form.value.password as arguments because we're passing in the username and password. And we have a fully connected signup component. So if I restart our backend service and open the application, we can test our signup form. So let's add a username of a at anish.co.uk and password of testing and let's hit sign up. And in the console, we can see the message and the result. So if we expand the result, we can see the username returned and the password appearing as an unreadable and undecipherable hash. This is how our data will be stored in the database. If I try to resubmit our form, in the response, we will see an error in the console. And if we expand the error twice, we can see a message telling us that username is expected to be unique. And this is our mongoose unique validator working for us. So this is really great so far. And just for completeness, let's verify that our newly signed up users are persisted into our MongoDB database. So I will head to mongodb.com and log in. Then within my cluster, I can select collections. And if I expand user models, we can now see the entries that are held within our database. And this will contain the username and password of our signed up users. So this is now a complete sign up solution. Let's just quickly add one more user into our form. I'm now going to refresh the database and we can see that it's been persisted. So we have this hashed password. And that completes this video where we've added a couple forms for signing up users and logging them in. Next, we will want to log users in to verify their details and to also explore the use of JSON web tokens. So I'll see you in the next video.